open up your mouth. That's what we've come to do. We've come to tell him how wonderful he is because he really is wonderful. There's nobody like him. I don't care where you look. I don't care where you search. There's nobody like him. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, saints, worship him. Hallelujah. It's not a task when you love him. It's not a task when you appreciate him. Hallelujah. of 
Jesus. Demons tremble at that name. At the name of Jesus, broken hearts can be healed. At the name of Jesus, strongholds can be broken. Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus, hallelujah, because that's power in the name of Jesus. So when you call it, don't call it haphazardly. Call it because you need him. I don't know about you, but what I need, I have no other choice but to call on the name of Jesus. To stand before you today, I had to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To come out my house, I had to call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To get in my car, I had to call on the name of Jesus because if we be honest there are situations and circumstances that will cause you to not even want to get out of the bed but at the name of Jesus situations change mindsets change hallelujah 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 glory Hallelujah for being good, for being kind, for being faithful. I thank him for being the lover of my soul. I stand before you still saved, still sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, determined to run on to see what the end might be. I stand before you encouraged today because I didn't want to get up here but I wanted to be I, I wanted to have victory over my fear victory over my grief hallelujah so I stand before you today victorious in Jesus I love him and I trust him with all that I have and all that I am, I trust him. I accept what he allows. God is still good in the midst of sorrow. God is still good. Hallelujah. God is still good. Hallelujah. I thank him for the breath that I breathe. I thank him. Hallelujah. That I can stand before you. I thank him. I thank him, I thank him, I thank him. Hallelujah. Because God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
y'all don't understand, see, because I battled in my mind about calling JJ to get somebody else to stand up here. But I was determined to show the enemy that my God is still God. Hallelujah. I still believe him. I still trust him. I still serve him. I still can give God glory. Hallelujah. Every time I breathe in and I breathe out, that's another reason to give God glory. That's another reason to tell him thank you. That's another reason to lift him because he's the Lord of all the glory. He deserves all the honor. Hallelujah. And I'll never, I'll never stop praising his name. So understand me. I will praise him all. for renewed strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give him glory. I give him honor. And I give him praise. Mm, God. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. It's a different kind of strength that you need. Hallelujah. When you lose a mother. Hallelujah. A mother that's been a mother. Hallelujah. It's a different kind of strength you need. Hallelujah. But I thank God. Hallelujah. 
I thank God, hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah that I don't have to walk this walk alone. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. just have one question. Do I have anybody in here who came on purpose to give God a praise? You came on purpose to give him a praise? And you're still sitting, you came on purpose to give him a praise? And you're still looking, you came on purpose to give him a praise? Together. Come on, let's shabak him. 
Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. We bless him. Whatever you need is in the house. Whatever you need is in the house. Hallelujah. And you don't need nobody to come and touch you to get what you need. If you have a relationship with God, talk to the Father and tell him what you need. He comes to supply. He comes to supply. Some of you got to reach for it. Some of you got to leap for it. Hallelujah. Some of you got to cry for it. But whatever you got to do, you do it to get what you need. in here he came to see about his people hallelujah hallelujah glory to God he came to see about you today he came to lift the burdens he comes to heal bodies. He came with the gifts in his hand. Hallelujah. So the question is, how bad do you want it? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. To God. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whatever you need is in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got family members you worried about? Call their name in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He came to see about his people today. Hallelujah. We take no glory for ourselves, but all the glory, all the honor belongs to him. It is him. It is God. Jehovah. Rapha. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Salome is in the house. Elohim. Lion of Judah. Bright and morning star. Rose of Sharon. He's in here. Lion of Judah. 
He's in here. Comforter, counselor, he's in here. Wonderful counselor, he's in here. And he came to see about his people today. What are you needing him for? What are you carrying that he should be carrying for you? God loves you. And he's always proving himself to you. We look for big things. It's in the small things. The fact that you can breathe. The fact that you have that use in the activity of your limbs. The fact that you can articulate the thoughts that you have in your mind to a God that can hear, that can see, that knows all. It's in those things. That when you lay down at night, you don't have a fear of someone breaking in on you. It's in those things. God is faithful and he is just. And he's concerned about you. He's concerned about the things that you're concerned about. So he create moments like this so that you can speak to him for yourself. You don't need nobody speaking for you. You have a mouth. Tell your God what you need. Tell your God what you're struggling with. Tell your God where it hurts. Tell your God who you need saved, who you need delivered. Tell him. And then thank him. Thank him for what he has done. Thank him for what he's going to do. Thank him that he's meeting the need. Thank him. It's in your thank yous. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God, for caring enough to come to 485 Robert Grissom Parkway to see about the people that come in here, to see what they need and to meet the need. We tell God, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God glory, we give him honor, and we give him praise for all that he has done thus far in the service. We do want to honor the Lord today for our leader and our pastor, our bishop, Bishop David L. Baxter, Jr. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord for our men's servant. Hallelujah. We honor the Lord for our first lady. First Lady Kenyatta Baxter, hallelujah. We honor the Lord for our house pastors, Pastor James King, Pastor Antoine Lawrence in his absence, Pastor Sherlyn Simmons, hallelujah. We honor the Lord for our chairman, Deacon, Deacon Clyde Bellamy, hallelujah. And we honor the Lord for the woman of God that will declare the word today in the person of pastor, overseer, peoples. We bless the Lord for you today. We believe there is a word in the house for us today. And we're gonna pull on the woman of God. We're gonna pull on her to hear what the Lord has to say. I believe it's Rhema. I believe it's for a right now situation right now circumstances so we lift you before the Lord hallelujah that the Lord will stand up in you and stretch out in you that he used you in an unusual way a way that you have never been used before hallelujah hallelujah and we count it done now in Jesus name you may have your seats I have a thank you card um, from uh, I'm gonna read the card and I'll tell you who it's from. With special thanks to all of you. To know you is to know people 
who are kind and considerate and thoughtful. To know you is to be grateful for the special things you do. For everything you've done, for being the special people you are, thank you so very much. Blessings from Karen, Shelton, and LaTanya Brown. On behalf of Mother Magdalene and Gary Grant's family, they wanted to tell you thank you. And while I have this moment, I want to tell my Greater True Light family, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for all your calls, your texts, your cards, your monetary gifts, um, the passing of my mother. My family is still talking about Greater True Light. <laughs> They're still talking about it. So I told them, I said, get ready because we're coming that way. We're coming that way. So we're excited about what God is doing. But I just want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, I love all of you. And thank you, thank you, thank you for your support and your continued support and your continued prayers. As I go through this moment, this time of bereavement with the loss of my mother, thank y'all for being there for me. It made it easier. You made it easier. So I thank you, and that's why it's not hard for me to stand in the literal sense, stand before you, because I know in whom I serve, and I'm not going to be bound by grief. I'm not. I'm just not. I'm still going to operate. I'm still going to do what God has called me to do, and there will be moments. There will be moments, but I tell God, thank you even in this. So thank you. And for my family, we love you and we appreciate you. At this time, we're getting ready for our tithe and our offering. We're still um, using our mortgage cash app for your tithe and your offering. Please um, be specific in what you're giving for. Um, they're still holding our our regular True Light, Greater True Light um, Cash App. We're still trying to work that out. But until then, we're going to use our mortgage um, Cash App to give our tithe and our offering. We do also have um, our credit card accessibility. We're going to ask if Elder Austin would do that. We're calling our deacons up to gather our tithes and our offerings. I want to remind everybody that even though this is the holiday season, you do have a duty to your father to give your tithe and your offering. That is your responsibility. It's not a debt you owe. It's something that is required as children of God. Be integral in your tithing and offering. You may hide from us, but you can't hide from God. So be integral in your giving. Amen. Standing all over the building. We're going to ask straight down the middle. Turn to your right and then turn to your left and be governed by our ushers. Before you move, let, let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for yet another opportunity to give into your kingdom. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you take what we give and, God, that you multiply it for the upbuilding of your kingdom and tearing down the stronghold of the enemy. Bless those that give and bless those that desire to give, that they may be able to give on the next time. Do it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be governed by our ushers.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mother, Mother Margaret Simmons being with us today. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord for our national mother. Hallelujah. And we do honor the Lord for Pastor Jasmine Spencer being with us. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. We're going to ask if you will all stand all over the building as I bring to your front none other than our bishop and our pastor, Bishop David L. Baxter. Amen. Come on, give Jesus a hand, praise. Hallelujah. Come on, give Jesus a hand, praise. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're grateful. Amen to the Lord. Amen for all the great things he has done. Amen. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, amen, my soul begins to cry out. Hallelujah. I thank God, amen, for saving me. I'm grateful today, amen, because, amen, for sure, amen, when you begin to reflect on what God has done for you, and where God has brought you from. If you have any sense of spiritual, amen, uh, any spiritual sense of who God is, it causes you to respond. Amen. I said it causes you to respond. Glory to God. To think about what Jesus did on Calvary. Amen. It causes me to respond. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I think about how he healed me, how he delivered me, how he brought me out, how he's been keeping my family, how he put food on the table, how he put clothes on my back. Somebody shout, it causes me to respond. The only way we can sit there and do nothing is that we don't think about what he's already done. When I begin to think about what he's done, it causes me to respond. Hallelujah. I praise him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because he's been good to me. Amen. I praise him today because he's my God. And I found out something about praise. Praise is personal. Amen. Praise is personal. Amen. We can't force you to do it. Amen. But we can encourage you to do it by reminding you of who your God is. Amen. Glory to God. And nothing makes me go off more than thinking about who he is in my life. If you want to send me into a frenzy, come on somebody. Remind me. Hallelujah. Of what he's done in my life. Glory to God. I thank him. Amen. There's something about reflection. Amen. Tell somebody, just take a peek back. Amen. I'm not going back if I just take a peek back. The peek causes me to praise. Oh my God. Amen. I praise him. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. It ought to make your hands clap. It ought to make your foot tap. Something ought to happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so we're grateful today. Honor him. I will not say much. Amen. But I thank him. Amen. For who he is in my life. Amen. He's been good to me. And I thank him today for this first Sunday. Amen. It's the last first Sunday in the year 2023. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Somebody didn't think you were going to make it to see it, but you're here. My God. Tell somebody after all the things you've been through from January up until now. Tell them you ought to praise him because you're still in your right mind. It was enough to drive me crazy, but God kept my mind. Oh, have mercy. Tell somebody I've been through the storm and the rain, 
go tell him I made it, I made it, I made it. All right. We got a woman of God. Amen. That's coming. Amen. But I am grateful. I am grateful. Amen. That through many dangers, toils, and snares, I've already come. It was his grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace is going to lead us right on through. Amen. Glory to God. I was preaching just the other night in Concord, North Carolina. And in the midst of my preaching, the Lord, amen, dropped in my spirit. Amen. That the next four weeks will be four weeks of favor. Amen. Tell somebody you won't struggle your way into 2024. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Listen, we get ready for the woman of God, but tell somebody you will not struggle your way in to 2024. I'm going in with favor. I'm going in with increase. I'm going in with more than enough. I'm going in being the head and not the tail. The lender, not the borrower, above and not beneath. Tell somebody I'm going in with favor. Oh, All right. I'm thankful. Amen. I know what he told me. And no matter what it looks like right now, it's already done. Amen. It's already done. And so I'm thankful. Amen. I'm thankful, amen, that he let me live, amen, to see this moment, amen, because this moment is going to be a pivotal moment in the life of many of you, amen, God's getting ready to shift you, amen, into another place, amen, glory to God, and I thank him for what I see, amen, that's getting ready to happen on behalf of any of you. Amen. You haven't seen nothing yet. Amen. God's getting ready to show up. Hey, I said God's getting ready to show up. Amen. So, we honor him today. If he will go in the fire to get the three Hebrew boys, he'll get in your situation to come get you. Glory to God. Amen. And so, I'm thankful today. Amen. That he's on his way. Amen. He's on his way. Amen. To get me. Amen. Tell somebody he remember. <laughs> Amen. He remember. He hasn't forgotten what he told you. Amen. He remembers exactly what he told you. And he ha I don't know why, but he want me to remind you that he's not a man. That he should lie. Being of the Son of Man, that he should repent if he said it. Shall he not do it? And if he spoke it, shall he not make it good? Amen. Tell somebody, I don't care how close you are to the deadline. Don't doubt God now. All right. We bless his name. We thank God. We have enjoyed the Lord in a great way today. It's time for the word of God. Amen. We have a wonderful, wonderful woman of God who's with us today. Amen. The Lord placed in my spirit to do family first or fam first Sunday. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And uh, I thank God for this woman of God who is family. Amen. She is family. Amen. Glory to God. Good. Amen. Before I introduce her and present her to us today, I'm thankful for the first lady of this great church. Would you help me celebrate our elect lady? <laughs> uh, come on, celebrate Lady Baxter. Amen. Glory to God. We thank God for Pastor King, Pastor Simmons, Overseer. Come on, let's thank God for Overseer Desmond Spencer. Amen. So glad for our national mother being with us and to 
Amen. All of our saints in the room today, those that have traveled, amen, from far and near, amen. Listen, when I saw Dad get up on that walker and give God a praise, y'all, I could have hung up with this thing. Tell somebody God's doing something. Amen. And some of us got two good legs that won't even stand up. Amen. But I'm telling you, you're going to wish one day that you gave God all you had. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I promise him, as long as I can stand and they work, I'm going to praise him. Whether you like it or not, I'm going to bless God with all I got. You wait until I get finished. Because one day you're going to realize if it had not been. All right. For the Lord who was on your side, you never would have made it. Tell somebody, wait until I get finished. That's the kind of church I go to. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some of us are stuck and stubborn. Amen. But God got your number. And he knows just where you live. Amen. And when the time is right, you'll realize who he is and what he's done for you. I never shall forget what the Lord has done for me. If I can't, if I can't thank him for nothing else, I thank him because he saved me one day. Turned my life around. And had he not done that, I would have been on my way to hell. But thank God today I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. And I've been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, shake somebody and say, I got the Holy Ghost. And if you don't have it, you can get it today. All right, turn that off. We get ready for preaching. We're thankful today. I feel good in my soul. And I thank God for what he's doing in the midst of his people. We have a vessel today, amen, that is prepared and ready to deliver the word of God. Amen. She's home today. Amen. Here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Amen. On yesterday, we celebrated 70 years of life. Amen. For Elder Dolores Simmons Austin. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. That after all she's been through, she's still here. And she's still smiling. Ain't still dancing. <laughs> still laying hands. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Glory to God. And we thank God. And amen. It just so happened that the woman of God, amen, was going to be here. And I knew the Lord would have her to come to be with us on today. Amen, glory to God, and so we're thankful. She hails to us today all the way from that big city of Sylvania, Georgia. If y'all ain't never been to Sylvania, y'all losing out. Y'all gotta get down to Sylvania and see the sights of Sylvania, Georgia. Amen. It is a beautiful, beautiful place, and we thank God for, amen, Sister Cassandra, amen, so glad for Minister Thomas, amen, who has come with her all the way from Sylvania, amen, and she is our regional director of education, amen, she has served on the national level of the Sounds of Praise, amen, glory to God, she's been chair lady of the youth department, Amen, glory to God. She is a preacher. She is a teacher. Amen. She is a mother. She is a sister. She is a friend. Amen. And I'm so glad to be her bishop. Amen. It is a privilege to serve this woman of God. We laugh. We have such a great time together. And I'm grateful that she's here today to greet the saints of the greater true light. Amen. Today we bring to your front Amen. Would you stand to your feet? 
amen, as we hasten to bring to your front today, amen, the woman of God who will break the bread of life. I would that you would pray for her, that you would give her your amens, your thank you, Jesus, your hallelujahs, amen, that you would stand when the word of God ministers to your heart, amen. I would that you would pray for her now when she would come, amen, to deliver the word of God to us. I present to some and introduce to others, amen, overseer Desmond, Nicole Peoples, the pastor of the city of victory. Sounds of praise in Sylvania, Georgia. Would you clap your hands and receive her at this time? Amen. Come on and give God praise this morning. Amen. So glad to be here this morning, amen, to give God the praise with you, amen, Ex uh, Bishop said I am home, amen, this is, I have a long lineage here, uh, if you didn't know, uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, Mother Wright was my aunt, Bishop Bland was my dad, and so I'm all up and through here in true life, amen, so I'm home, amen, grab your Bibles this morning. I want to give you what the word of the Lord has given me to give you. And while you're standing, or certainly the protocol has been established, but I have to honor Bishop Baxter um, this morning and honoring him for allowing me to be in his pulpit, this sacred desk. Uh, not only Bishop, national recording artist. <laughs> without honoring uh, First Lady Baxter. I love you first. Amen. And to each and every one in their respective place. Second Corinthians 1 and 21 is where I want to be this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I am not a singer. I'm going to tell you that right now. But, I, but I'm going to sing. Amen. As you're getting your scripture this morning, true, true light will push you on that edge, won't they? They will. <laughs>
with you to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned us and he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised. I want to read that again if you allow me. It is God who enables us along with you to stand firm for Christ. He has commissioned. Your Bible might say anointed us. Somebody say anointed. And he has identified us as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything. Somebody need to shout everything. I don't know what you're waiting on, but God's promised me some things. Somebody need to shout everything that he has promised us in Jesus' name. God, Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this moment at this time. And Father, we already know that you're in the room. Maximize our time together. Allow your Holy Spirit to run in this room from the front to the back, from the sides to the corners. Father, we thank you now that somebody's being delivered in this word. We thank you that someone's mind is being transformed. Someone's thoughts are being changed. Someone's body is being healed in this word. We thank you now for what you're going to do. We're sit, we sit in expectation of the move of God. And we will give you praise at the end of this and say, God did it. And to God be the glory for the things he has done. You may have your seat this morning. I'm not a long preacher, so don't get comfortable because I'll be sitting down while you're just getting crossing your legs. Amen. So I'm telling you, you better get on this train while the train is moving. Amen. I want to talk this morning, if you will, from the subject, God's hand is on me. God's hand is on me. Uh, there has been an ongoing, ongoing battle, ongoing war since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. one, uh, one that we have all been a part of. Whether you know it or not, from the beginning, the enemy's job has, to go, has been to go after the word of God. Right? You remember in the Garden of Eden, when the serpent, the Bible said, beguiled or tricked Eve. He asked her one question. He thought he put the seed of doubt in her mind. He said to her, did God really say not to eat of this tree? And he was fighting from the beginning. Remember when he said that to her, what he was doing was fighting the word over their lives. Just like he's fighting the word over your lives. The scripture declares that your adversary walks around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Uh, if you allow me, because as you know, I am an educator. So I'm going to educate you on scripture. That scripture literally means when you transliterate it in the, in the Greek, it means to suck the life out of. So he is seeking, he's going around looking to see who he can suck the life out of. Hallelujah. And so if Jesus is the word... And the word brings life, then guess what he's trying to do is to suck the word out of your life. Yeah. Uh, he's trying to drain you in the going through. Uh, you're not just going through for nothing. He's fighting the word over you. Is there anybody that got word over the life? Even 
and over and over and over until it comes to pass. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she wasn't just saying it one time. She was meditating on the word. If I can just touch the hem, if I can just touch the hem, if I can just touch the hem, if I, if I, if I, I need you to know whatever your word is, you got to keep meditating over it. Because the enemy wants to drain your life. Uh, he's trying to drain the word that's within you. Anybody got word in you? The word brings life. The Bible says the word brings light. Life and light. The Bible says the word is living. It is moving. It is doing something. Oh, don't you think that if the word is over your life, that because you don't see it happen, that the word is not doing. The Bible declares that he performs the word. He watches over the word until it performs what it's supposed to do. That means that there's a war going on between the word over your life and what the enemy wants you to do. He wants to separate you from the word. That's why it's so hard sometimes as a pastor because people get offended so easily. I'm not talking to this church. I'm talking about probably my church. They get so offended with the pastor. I want you to know that's the trick of the enemy. Because if he could disconnect you from the voice, that's the leader. Sometimes, there's some times as in leadership, I'm going through Pat Elder McCray, and, and, and sometimes I can't hear God from myself. I need my leader. I need my leader to pour into me. And if he can cause offense between, oh, Jesus said offenses will come. But what you cannot do is separate from the voice. Because if he can separate you from the word, he will suck the life right out of you. Hallelujah. And so this is what I want you to know. Bishop, you said it yesterday. David said it like this. In Psalm 27, I would have fainted had I not believed the goodness of the Lord, the land of the living. Uh, anybody ever felt like fainting? Anybody been at the breaking point of life? The enemy already knows, can I help you this morning, that his time is not long. Yes. Hear me, he already knows the end of the story. He's already read the end of the book, and he knows that his time is not long. And so he already knows that he is a defeated foe. But what he's trying to do is to take as many people as he can with him. Hallelujah. You ever watched a lie in the truth? Why is it that bad news and lies travel so much faster than the truth? It's because the lie knows, just like the enemy, because he is the father of lies. Hear me this morning. It does not have long to live. And so it tries to burn as much territory as it can and to do as much destruction as it can before it ends. The same thing the enemy is doing to the kingdom of God. But here's what Jesus told uh, Peter. If you build your house on the rock, uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of lying will not prevail. The gates of scandal will not prevail. Uh, it will not prevail when you build your house on the rock. And so because he knows his time is not long, he's trying to do as much as he can and do as much damage. So what he has done is he has intensified his attack against the body of Christ. Maybe it's just me. Pastor King, it's just me. I, I, but I felt in this last season an all-out attack against my body. I felt an all-out attack against my family, against my church. Uh, 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 it's been unusual activity, hallelujah, unusual warfare, hallelujah. And this Ephesians tells us that we are wrestling against principalities. I felt that attack this season. We've been wrestling against powers, against rulers of darkness uh, uh, of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to know that when we talk about the wrestling, the fighting, the warfare against principalities, in that scripture, principalities means the original. Yeah. Yeah. It means uh, from the beginning. And so what you're fighting against is the leader of the fight from the beginning. And I'm going to bring you back to Genesis. Where
where he was trying to fight the word. Yeah. So what we're fighting is, is the beginning of lies, yeah. the beginning of torture, yeah. the beginning yeah. of, of, of making you feel discouraged. Yeah. And here is where you find us in the scripture. This morning, Paul was defending the faith because they had argued. Y'all sit down. Y'all pushing me. I ain't ready. I got to teach first. He was defending the faith because they argued that he had suffered. He was suffering too much to be spirit filled. You know how people say now they still going through. Well, they must be doing something. They ain't doing something right. They ain't living right. This is where Paul, this is where Peter was. And Paul was, he, he, he was suffering and people were saying that because he was suffering that God couldn't be with him. There was no way the anointing of God was on his life. But if anybody knows anything about the anointing, they know it means being pressed oh, yeah. and being squeezed. Oh, yeah. And so Paul was arguing in 2 Corinthians that the suffering meant that God was going to reveal his glory yeah. that much more. Yeah. So you find me in verse 21 today. He says to them, it is God who enables us yeah. along with you to stand firm in Christ. And he has commissioned us or anointed us for this service. He goes on and he says, and he has identified us as his own. How? By, by placing the Holy Spirit in our lives. And this, because he's put his spirit in us, this is the way he identifies with us and gives us the promises. Because first, uh, early in the scripture, he says that in him all his promises are yes. And amen. So his first installment is that he puts his spirit in us to identify that we have his yes. Woo, I got happy right there. I don't know what you got on the altar, but you got a yes. How do you have a yes? Because if you're in the spirit, you are, you, you, you're in line, in tune with the father. He told his disciples, this is how you pray. When you're praying, you say, our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, when you're in the spirit, you are praying the heavenly prayers for life to come here on earth. And so when you pray the alignment of the father and the will of God, it gives you a yes. Now let me help you real quick. You can't pray for nobody else's husband. That only happens in Georgia. It don't happen here. I'm just, I'm just telling you what be happening in Georgia. You can't pray for nobody else's wife. You got to pray the will of the Father. It is his will that I am well. It is his will that my mind is whole. It is his will that I'm above and not beneath. It is his will that I'm the lender and not the borrower. It is his will that I'm more than a conqueror. So when you begin to pray the will of the Father, he begins to give you only a yes and amen. And so uh, your version in the Bible might say that you are anointed. But let me tell you where I was blessed in this word. Uh, here in verse 21, he has commissioned or anointed us. It is the word derived from a word that means to borrow. Huh. Or to make use of a thing. So he has borrowed us for his service. He's going to make use of a thing for his will. But the etymology of the word, meaning I broke it down even further, uh, it means might and power. And it means might and power, not just in anything, but in the hand of God. Hear me, did you hear me at the beginning of the service? I told at the sermon, I told you God's hand is on me. So in case you missed it, I want to tell you the reason why you're still here yeah. is because his hand yeah. is on you. And the reason why you didn't give up is because his hand yeah. is on you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest this morning, I'm doing the towel many times, Bishop, but some kind of way uh, the spirit would move in the middle of the night and call me back uh, 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 to my place because his hand uh, is on me. I, I don't know. I, I'm going to tell a little bit because, you know, my daddy not here no more, so I can tell these stories, Dolores. Uh, uh, Lord, like he would call you. Uh, I would be on the dance floor at the club. 
And, and, and people would say to me, literally, they would say, oh, the Bonnerie, they would say, you look like you in the choir. <laughs> Couldn't even dance like the world. I would be somewhere and I would try to curse and somebody would say, you don't even sound right. Cursing. You know why? Because his hand was on me. He even, oh, y'all looking like y'all innocent, but even while you weren't doing right, <laughs> even when you were doing what you shouldn't have been doing at the time you shouldn't have been doing, God's hand was on, was on, was on you. Y'all yeah, yeah, hear me? Y'all yeah, hear me what I'm saying? The reason why the car accident didn't kill you. Because guess what? His hand was on you. Bishop said it a few moments ago. I said, Bishop, don't get me started. Because I don't like to shout right before I preach because I'll be out of breath. But I wanted to give a little tap with my feet because he said uh, he kept your mind. Well, you should have lost your mind. Because guess what? His hand was on you. It's the reason that it took somebody else out, but you're still living with what took them out. It's because his hand, his hand, his hand, his hand, his hand, his hand, his hand was on you. The reason why he sustained you through it all is because his hand was on you. God, I thank you.
verse 22, God has empowered us. He has anointed you. Somebody, I'm here to tell you, God has given you something to do. And when I say that, I have to caution the bishop because everybody want to preach. We got so much more to do outside the world than preaching in the church. Matter of fact, I'm tired of preaching to people. Y'all got enough word to last y'all for the rest of y'all lives. But I want to take this same anointing in the boardroom. I need to take the same anointing in the school. I need to take the same anointing over there when, I produ- when they producing albums. I want to take the same anointing because everybody needs a piece of this. I don't care where they are. Everybody needs to know you're anointed. Can I tell you you won't fail in this? Who am I ministering to this morning? You won't fail in this this time. Get back in there. This is your time. This is your season. I need you to encourage someone. Say, you won't lose this time. And I need you to ask them a question when they told you that. You say, tell, ask them why. I want you to preach with me. I want you to say, because God's hand is on you. Uh huh. Uh, uh, God's hand, y'all need to say it again, is on you. I need you to say it one more time for the Holy Ghost. God's hand is on you. Can you still 
still serve him in the valley? Can you still say, God, you are real in the valley? Because he led you there. He got a reason for you to be there. We used to sing the song at the old church, let my light shine. So that somebody in the valley, they're trying to get home. Can you go to the valley for them? But do you, do you crumble, uh, crumble and complain and say, God, I'm tired of being here in this place. But somebody in the valley, he led you in the valley. But David said it like this, I was not there. Because guess what? You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they do for me. Woo. But I want to go back to verse 3 for a moment. Lead me in the path of righteous path literally means bunker or an entrenchment. You got it because I heard you laugh. Y'all know what a bunker is? It's when you're in war and you are fighting the enemy and trying not to get hit. So you have dug a ditch in the, in the dirt. That's the path of righteousness. because he's leading you. And as long as he's leading you, you got some backup. As long as his hand is on you, you got some backup. I, I want to tell you this morning, some of you are going through some warfare. I know it because I've experienced it. My church has experienced it. It's not just happening in Sylvania, Georgia. It's happening to the body of Christ. But as I told them on Wednesday night, in the magnitude that you see it happening in the natural, it's got to happen just as doubly in the spirit. Hallelujah. So when you see unusual things happen in the natural, you best believe that God will not be out. He won't be outshined. He said, hey, I'm going to get the glory out of this. Uh-huh. So, you're setting yourself up for a miracle. We say it in our church every Sunday, we believe salvation, miracles, signs, and wonders. How do you need a miracle if you don't need a miracle? You only need a miracle when your back is against the wall. You only need a miracle when there's no other way to make it but God. But surely Stephen said, I'm next in line for a miracle. Why? Because God's hand is on me. And if he leads me in the valley, I'll say yes, Lord. If he leads me down the path, I'll say yes, God. Yes to your will and yes to your way. Because I want to be uh, where you are. I got to be where you are. with you, I want you to remember God's hand is on you. When his hand is on you, he has anointed you for it. My struggle would not be your struggle. My story would not be your story, but whatever you're going through, guess what? His hand, his hand, his hand is on you. You got to remember that. Through your tears, guess what? His hand is on you. Through your pain, guess what? His hand is on you. I, I, I know you think God has forgotten, but can I tell you that his hand, his hand, his hand is on the steps of a good man. Ordered by the Lord. I need that to sit in for a moment. How many know his hand is on my life? Why did I have to go 
through all of this, God, why did I have the family? Just keep looking straight, because some of y'all said this, why did, I go, why did I have to be born in the family that I was born in? Why did I have to experience these things in life? But I want to tell you this morning, God got your path because his head was on your life. He couldn't have gave it to nobody else but you. Hallelujah. His hand. His hand. Can I pray for the woman in the yellow dress? Would you come? God's hand is on her. I need you to know God's hand is on your life. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you. It's on you when you're in pain. It's on you when you're in the hurt. It's on you when they've done you wrong. It's on you uh, when they backstab you. It's on you. He hasn't forgotten you. Hallelujah. He's with you until the very end. As I was ministering when I said that very thing, why did I have to experience some of the things that I've experienced in life? Why is it that I've had to go, God, it just seems unfair that I've had to go through some of those things in my life. I'm trying to understand. This person didn't have that. This person, but it seems like I've had to experience some of the things that it just seems unnecessary. Hallelujah. But I, what I saw the Lord tell me to tell you is that his hand is on your was for your household. This message was for your family. God's hand is on you. It's the reason why you never finish. It's the reason why you still don't finish. It's the reason why you're unique. Because God's hand is on you. What you've gone through says, if you read 2 Corinthians, continue to read it, it tells us that we go through things to, for God to comfort us so we can comfort others. So here's what I want to tell you. Your experiences have made you who you are. Don't negate them. Don't wish them away. Don't say, I wish it hadn't been. I'm just leaving you
Amen. If you're unsaved today, I want to offer you Christ. I cannot preach without offering Christ. I need you to do me a favor this morning. I'm not going to rush through this. I need you to find a neighbor. I need you to look at them and ask them, I don't care how long they've been coming to church. I want you to ask them, are you saved? Now I want you to wait for an answer. And I want you to answer them. If you're not saved, I want, if your neighbor's not saved, bring them here to me. If they're unsaved, bring them here, bring them here, bring them here. If they're not saved, bring them to me. Come on, come on, come on. If they, if they said no or I don't know, I want them to come. That's right, they're coming. Clap your hands. They're coming. Is there another? Did anybody else have neighbors that said no? Bring them on. Bring them on. Bring them, bring them, bring them. You bring them. Who's unsaved? Is that both all of y'all unsaved? All the, do y'all want to be saved? You wanna be, they said they want to be saved. Here's what I want you to know. It's easy as A, B, C. God's hand is already on your life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The anointing is already shot you the almost. It's already on you. What you feel is the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we thank you now. It's as simple as A, B, C, ladies. A, you acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and you need him in your life. B, you believe that he sent his son for you. And C, you call upon his name. A, B, C. Do you acknowledge that you're a sinner and you need God? Would you acknowledge that? All right. B, do you believe Jesus is Lord and he came to save your soul? You believe that? All right. And C, you just ask him in your life. Do you want God to be in your life? Do you want Jesus to be in life? Do you want to be saved? That's the ABC Romans. Let me back it up with some scripture. For the deep sakes. Romans 10, 9 and 10. You confess. You believe. You are saved. So thank you for these people. I want you to repeat after me. It's not in what you're saying, but it's in what you believe. So repeat after me. Would you do the same in the audience? Father, I thank you for another opportunity to call on your name. Father, I ask you in my life, forgive me for my sins and all I've done wrong. I acknowledge that Jesus is Lord and I ask him into my life this day in Jesus name. I believe that because I ask and because I believe that I am saved and I declare now that I am, I am, I am saved. And as simple as that, come on, come on, come on. Y'all give it up. Heaven is rejoicing.
as I go to my seat, I want you to remember on this week, the rest of the year, God's hand is on me. God bless you. Continue to pray my strength in the Lord. Tell somebody he has a hand on you. Come on, reach over and tell somebody he has his hand on you. Just one more person, tell him he has his hand on you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Anybody accept that word today? Anybody receive that word on today? Lift your hands and thank him for his hand. Come on, thank him for his hand. Hallelujah. We bless his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We honor God. Amen. Sister uh, Denisha, if you would, would you get their phone numbers and information for us? Amen. We dare not let them leave here. Amen. And not keep in touch. Disciple them. Amen. Amen. How many you know that was a wonderful thing to give your life to the Lord? Anybody remember when you got saved? Anybody remember when you gave Jesus your life? Come on, tell somebody he's turning your life around. Encourage somebody to tell him he'll turn your life around. You confessed it today, but watch the change tomorrow. You confessed it today, but watch the change tomorrow. Is there any reason anybody here can really say he changed my life? I'm not who I used to be. Come on, from the altar until where I am right now, I'm better than I've ever been before. Because I made Jesus my choice. Oh, hallelujah. Some folk would rather. Have silver and gold. Come on. Some folk. Would have houses and land. These things. Forget about their soul. But I decided to make Jesus my choice. God bless you. That's what I decided. To make Jesus my choice. Woo! All right, we got to go. The woman of God is looking inside of the good time. Tell somebody, I made Jesus my choice. Amen. I found out he's real. His blood does work. He can clean you up and make you brand new. Woo! Follow him all the way. Tell somebody I'm going all the way with the Lord. Amen. I bless him today. I'm thankful. You know, the Bible says this heaven rejoices over one soul. Today they got three from 485. I don't know how many other being saved somewhere else, but I know he heaven got three today. God. Somebody shout, heaven got three today. Oh, God, God, I thank you. Three for the kingdom. I thank God 
for the vessel that he uses. Tell somebody, all it takes is one word. I don't care who it comes through. Use who you want to use. Just save somebody. Oh, have mercy. Amen. We bless God. Amen. Amen. Church has got to get back about being saved. Amen. That's what the church has got to get back to being about being saved. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. But I thank God today. Amen. For the woman of God. Amen. Because if you're going to heaven, you're going to heaven because you saved. Amen. I don't care how much money you pay in church. Amen. Glory to God. How good you look in your suit. Amen. Glory to God. All that's going to look good when it's all over. Amen. But when they close everything up and seal the beer, y'all ain't saying nothing. Your soul better be right. Come on and shout hallelujah. Amen. I refuse to look good going to hell. Oh, no, no, no. I need to go to heaven when I die. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God today. Glory to God. Amen. That what happened in these young ladies today is eternal. Amen. It is not temporal. It is eternal. Amen. And right now, you don't do this. Right now, you don't understand. Right now, you don't understand the full extent of what just happened to you. Amen. And that's our job to teach you. Amen. But I want you to know what happened in you today. Can't nobody take it from you. Amen. Jesus lives in you right now. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. He's walking down the streets of your soul. Amen. He's cleaning house. Oh, I'm a Hosiah. Amen. Glory to God. Kicking out everything that's not like you. My God. Hallelujah. Amen. I know when we get saved, we, we get joy down in our soul. We get laughing. We don't know why we laughing. We don't know why we smiling. We don't know why. It's because the joy of the Lord. Tell somebody he just came in. He just came in. And it's something about when Jesus comes in. That pushes everything that the enemy had set out your way. I thank him today. Lord, I thank you. Look down your road and say, I'm glad I got Jesus. I'm glad I got Jesus. I'm glad I got Jesus. Let's go. I'm glad I got Jesus. I'm glad I got
and go home. Lord have mercy. Y'all do me a favor and grab somebody's hand and say, neighbor, because his hand is on you, he can handle it. He can handle it. He can handle it. He can handle it. He can. job. Amen. Did we not enjoy overseer peoples tonight, today? Come on. I said, did we not enjoy the woman of God? Amen. Tell somebody that's a prophetic word over my life. Slap somebody high five and say, his hand is on you. God, I praise you right now. Amen. Amen. I don't care how bad your life has been. You live because of his hand. Glory to God. So let go the past. Embrace the future. Because his hand is on you. I need everything. I want to.
want everybody in the room today, amen, to get your beautiful seed in your hand. Every one of you today that can release a gift of $20 today as far as seed, find your seed, find your seed, find your home, find, find your seed. Be careful what you put your hand on. Don't just give God anything. Give him a wonderful seed that will show your appreciation of what he's released to you today. Amen. You can release that seed by way of cash out. Amen. You can release that seed tangibly by placing it on the altar. You can release that seed. Amen. Through Givelify, however you decide to do it. Amen. We want you to bring it to the glory of God. And let's release it to the glory of God. Just get up from where you are. Amen. We're going to move swiftly. Amen. To get you out today. We've had a wonderful, wonderful, hallelujah, wonderful time, wonderful. Glory to God. Amen. That's Brother Bryant. Amen. Amen. That's Brother Bryant. That's him. Amen. Pastor, would you just put your hand, come here. Put your hand on him. Glory to God. Just put your hand on him. Amen. And declare it. Declare it. Declare it. Oh! Somebody shout his hand is on him. I don't care what you're going through. God's hand is on you right now. Glory to God. Things are shifting for you. Just receive that impartation. and tell him thank you for it. Go ahead and thank him for it. Go ahead and thank him for it. shot is already done. Say it again, it's already done. Amen. His hand just seals the deal. Amen. But it's already done. We thank God for what has taken place in the room today. We say to you, overseer peoples, preach on. Amen. Glory to God. Teach on. Continue. Amen. To let the Lord use you amen, in the way that he uses you. There's an anointing in the way God uses you. Amen. Glory to God. Tell somebody, if you just be yourself, he can use you for his glory. Amen. Glory to God. And I thank God that the woman of God, amen, always let God use her the way that he uses her. And because of that, we've got results. I said we got results. Amen. Souls 
amen, were saved today because of the anointing. So we thank God for what he has done at this time. Amen. Father, we thank you for all the seed that have been sown. We thank you that you give seed to the sower and you give bread to the eater. So we thank you that what we've released, we have not lost. But it's already on its way back to us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we claim it to be so even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. All right. This victory here, that's all this is. This is victory. And when the musicians get victory, Lord have mercy. At this time, hiya. Amen. Sister Jasmine, would you come? Amen. And give us our brief announcements. And we're going to let you go home. Thank you so much.
announcements. We're going to hear the announcements and then we're going to let you go. Amen. Deacons, if you would please. Deacons, if you would please. Deacons, if you would please gather these seeds for us, please. So we can take care. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, there's, there's some more over here. There you go. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. All right. Let's hear from Sister Jamie. This is our first, this is our first time, and y'all making it real hard. Amen. But how many know it's the Holy Ghost? All right. Let's hear the announcement. All right. That'll work. Y'all about to make me sing yes, Lord, on y'all. That's going to stir up again. Okay. All right. We just... <laughs> banquet. The tickets are $20 and if anyone would like to um, or anyone would like to purchase excuse me, you can see Pastor James King for that. Mm -hmm. On December 16th at 11 a.m. we will have our Southeastern Regional Meeting which will be virtual. All members and auxiliary heads are required to be on this meeting as we reset our region for um, a new year's work. Um, and virtual information will come forthcoming. Amen. December 17th at 3 p.m. we will have the service um, celebrating Bishop and First Lady's anniversary at Cathedral of Hope Ministries at 3 p.m. at St. George in St. George, South Carolina. Please pray for our bishop as he travels to Snellville, Georgia for the pastoral anniversary of Apostle David Twineman um, who is over the Strong Tower Christian Center. If you have not turned in your pledges for our mortgage campaign, campaign, please do so ASAP. If you would like to partner with us to reach our $300,000 goal, please see one of our ushers, deacons, or one of our financial advisors. These are the announcements, so please gather yourself together. Amen. You made it. Amen. You made it. Thank God. Amen. Sister Jasmine is amen. Um, stepping into her role. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Stepping into her role. And we certainly appreciate the Lord. Amen. For a, a wonderful job. Sister Alesta Pryor, who is our church administrator, who has served in that capacity for many, many years. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, we're giving, amen, some help and we're making some transitioning and some shifting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let me know you got to raise up the church. Amen. Glory to God that we'll have people to step in place and to continue moving forward the work. And she's excited, amen, about Sister Jasmine. And Sister Jasmine's excited about working, amen, in that capacity. And so thank God today, amen. She did a wonderful job, amen. So let's continue to encourage her and push her, amen, as she continues to serve in this uh, capacity in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe all has been said and done. October the 9th, amen, is that anniversary banquet. Amen. It starts at 4 o'clock p.m. in December. I'm sorry. Woo. Amen. December the 9th, amen, is that date. And if you would like tickets, you can see Pastor King for that in Jesus' name. If our hearts and minds are clear, let's thank the Lord for all of our visiting friends, all of our visiting friends. If you're visiting us for the first time, would you just wave your hand at us, let us know who you are. Amen. We've had some others that have left already, but we're thankful for all of you in Jesus' name. Bless you. Amen. Um, 
as we know, our bishop celebrated his 43rd yeah. birthday on Tuesday past. Come on, let's clap our hands for 43 years. Amen. Amen. We did announce that if anybody wanted to be a blessing or to bring a token of love to him, that you could today. Um, we will do it today and extend it to next Sunday. Amen. Amen. So if anybody have any kind of gift or card that they want to bless our bishop with for celebrating 43 years, I ask you can bring it now. Amen. Um, and if you don't have it this Sunday, I'll give you the opportunity next Sunday to do it, to do it again. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Bless you, man. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 And if anybody want to bless his cash app, it is dollar sign Bishop David Baxter. Amen. Says for someone very special, as long as there are people like you who care with all their hearts, the world is still a place of possibilities and hope. As long as there are people like you who reach out and give with kindness, each day still holds so many special moments. As long as there are people like you, life will be happier because you're someone who is caring and giving who reaches out to others in warmth, honesty, and understanding and makes people feel so lucky to know you. Wishing you a birthday and as wonderful as you are. And like I said, as far as us, we want to say thank you for your, your leadership, your guidance, and your words of wisdom that's helped us through our marriage, that has helped with ministry and in life, period. And we just want to say that we love you and we appreciate you. Happy birthday. my member, y'all. Amen. I said, that's my member. Amen. All y'all my member. Baby. Bishop, on behalf of Team 6, we want to say we love you. Happy birthday. And we check your cash out. God bless you. Hallelujah. Team 6. Praise the Lord. Any of the teams in here? All right. We thank the Lord for you. Amen. We pray. Thank you so much for all of the uh, love that has been shown. Amen. Throughout the week. I had a wonderful, wonderful birthday week away. Amen. Uh, my wife took me out of town. Amen. We had a beautiful time away. And uh, amen. Showered me with wonderful gifts. Oh, wonderful gifts. Yes, yes. Amen. And I praise the Lord for all of the gifts that have come. Amen. From everyone. The texts, the calls, the posts. Amen. Everything that has been done. The monetary donations. Thank you so much for all that you've done to show your love, amen, to me, amen? And I want you to know all of you, that I love all of you so much, amen, I love you all so much, amen. I want you to know Brother Eddie called me, amen, on the phone, Brother Eddie called, and when Brother Eddie called me, he always starts out laughing. He'll never say, he said, Bishop, and <laughs> they're going to laugh. <laughs> So he made me laugh because he's laughing. And he said, I was in, he was said he was, he was, uh, had been in the hospital, had to go to the hospital. Amen. But even in being in the hospital and going through, he said, I got out, but I'm still want you to know happy birthday. Isn't that wonderful that somebody would think that of you to call? I didn't even know he was, had gone to the hospital, but thank God that even through that, he thought enough of me, amen, to call me on my birthday. And I want you to know, Brother Eddie, that meant a lot. 
thank you so much, amen, for what you did. Everybody, thank you for what you have done in Jesus' name. Look at, amen. Thank you, Brother Eddie. Thank you, amen. And anytime you ride by my house on the bicycle, you just start laughing. You just start laughing. <laughs> It's all right, Bishop, all right, First Lady, all right. And just start laughing. You know, you got to have people right that around you. Amen. It's enough sadness in the world. Amen. Find something to laugh about. And, just, and if you can't find nothing to laugh about, just start laughing. Amen. Laughter is medicine for the soul. Amen. Tell somebody laughing is good for you. Amen. We've been crying a lot, but find something to laugh about. Even through the tears, find something to laugh about. Amen. Laugh because the devil lost again. All right, let's stand to our feet. Going home. Hallelujah. The devil is still a liar. God is still in control. Hallelujah. Hey, I ain't going to start nothing. I'm going to let it go. Amen. Because I'm telling you, I believe in that thing. Amen. You can laugh at the enemy. Amen. Because what he thought was going to happen. Amen. Didn't happen. God is in control. Thank you so much again, Overseer Peoples. Amen. Sister Cassandra. Amen. Minister Thomas. Amen. Y'all, if y'all hadn't heard old school preaching, y'all need to hear Minister Thomas. Good God Almighty. Yes, sir. Amen. I'll tear your church up in seven minutes and sit on like he ain't done nothing. Amen, but I love him. He's a great, great young man. We thank the Lord for him, all of you. Amen. Pray for us. Amen. Pastor people, you are all in my message for this afternoon. Amen. But Pastor King made me preach this afternoon, so I got to preach this afternoon in, uh, in St. George shortly. Amen. And uh, you are all in my message for this evening, so I thank God for confirmation. Amen. Of what the Lord is saying. Amen. Tell somebody, I sure do love you. Amen. Amen. I sure do love you. We're going home in the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you for how you blessed us today. How you poured out your power and how you poured out your spirit. We thank you because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Father, through all the things you have brought us through, we still trust you. We still serve you in the beauty of holiness. We thank you for your servant in whom you've used today to speak such wonderful things into our spirit. We give you praise for overseer Nicole Peoples. We pray your blessings upon her and our wonderful church in Sylvania, Georgia. We ask you for traveling mercies over the dangerous highways. Oh, God, that you'd get them back home safely. And Lord, all that she's poured into us, we thank you that, hallelujah, you're pouring it back into her double. In the name of the Lord, strengthen her for the task at hand. Continue to move in her ministry and in her life. Lord, look on our national mother and, oh, God, overseer Spencer and, oh, God, Kiara. God, we thank you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, for the body of Christ at large. We thank you, oh God, for how you brought us together on this first fam day, God. We thank you for how you showed up in such a magnificent way. Thank you for the souls that have been won into the kingdom. Oh, God, we just give you praise. Now, Lord, as we dismiss from this place, but never from your presence, we ask that you would cover us under your blood. Keep us safe from our hurt, harm, and danger until we all meet again. And for that, we tell you thank you. We tell you thank you very much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Hook somebody, tell them to love before you leave. God bless you this mess.